You actually spent some time working closely with Sergey Brin. Yeah. So uh, after we, you know, built uh, TensorFlow Quantum, th there was a team that was forming around Sergey working on quantum technologies uh, and AI and physics and AI more broadly. Uh, and and to me, I was sort of getting a bit uh, impatient with the timelines with the compute the computing stack, mm -hmm. and I saw that there were opportunities in quantum communications and sensing that were maybe shorter term. And so I wanted to try my hand at that. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was a, a completion of sort of the vision of understanding the world at a quantum mechanical level. Because if even if you have the algorithms running on quantum computers that can understand quantum data and learn AI representations of them, how do you acquire quantum data and how do you transmit it? And so that's what I worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, so I worked on quantum analog digital conversion, the US quantum internet. And so to me, it was completing the stack for us to be able to perceive and predict and eventually control our world at a quantum mechanical level, which to me is kind of a very deep node in the tech tree, let's say. It's a civilizational technology that's really important. But during that time in quantum computing, I realized that actually there was gonna be different nodes of our, our, our tech tree that need development imminently that use a different kind of physics that's not quantum mechanical physics. And that would be much more useful for, for generative AI as I was seeing sort of generative AI workloads eat more and more of the compute internally at Google. Right? So we've got classical digital computers right yep. now, the classical CPU from yep. Intel and, and such. And then NVIDIA, I think very luckily fell upon uh, <laughs> the opportunity with GPUs. Yep. I, I, most people hopefully know GPUs, graphical processor units, were originally created for video games. For graphics, yeah. For graphics. Yep. And then they just happened to get a market in Bitcoin mining, yeah, right, and then all of a sudden here comes the whole generative AI yeah. world, and and Nvidia becomes a two trillion dollar company. Yeah, like that's a lot of good luck. Yeah, that's a lot of good luck. Yeah, turns out uh, matrix multiplications, uh, which GPUs excel at, are very useful for all sorts of uh, different applications, including AI. But as as you mentioned, GPUs weren't designed from the ground up from first principles to be AI processors, right? It's kind of a co-evolution between the hardware and the algorithms, right? Mm -hmm. The algorithms that ran on GPUs, like modern deep learning, tended to do well because GPUs already existed and then both kind of fed off each other, yeah. right? So we're trying to create an evolutionary fork in the space of hardware. It's gonna engender evolutionary forks in the space of algorithms and they're gonna co-evolve. That's why we're a full stack company and we co-design the algorithms and hardware.